The results of a poll released this week on our attention. For the past 10 years, Gallup has asked, do the Republican and Democratic parties do an adequate job representing the American people, or do they do such a poor job that a third major party is needed? Well, this week, those saying the two major parties did an adequate job hit an all-time low, and the percentage of people saying a third party is needed hit an all-time high. For more on what this means, we're joined from Washington by Nathan Gonzalez. He's the deputy editor of the Rothenberg Political Report. So what do you make of these findings? Well, I think this third party question is a um, just another way of asking the congressional job approval question right now. And for a large segment of Americans who think that it's, there's too much gridlock, they don't agree with what Congress is doing, they're extremely open to another, uh, another possibility. And so when prompted to say, well, would you want a third party? They'll say, sure, we don't like what Republicans or Democrats are doing, so let's look for another way. So is this indicative of why the Tea Party's popularity has sustained itself over time? Well, I think the Tea Party is a, a slightly different animal. Uh, I think the, it, it would be natural to say, well, the Tea Party is, is in place in order to become the next th real third party across the country. But the, the Tea Party has never really shown a desire to become that third party. I think it's more of a reform movement within the Republican Party. I think the Tea Party kind of uh, revels in its decentralization, uh, but in order to become, I think, a legitimate electoral third party threat, you would need to be much more organized, uh, be, have much more of a central leadership in order to win you know, races up and down the ballot. Despite the growing sentiment for a third party, aren't there huge structural obstacles to creating one? Right, I think there are a, a number of issues. One are structural issues for any potential third party. Um, our system is, I think, biased toward Republicans and Democrats, toward two parties. If you're a third party, in most states, it is much more difficult to gain ballot access. Just to become a choice, uh, it becomes more difficult. You either need more signatures, uh, and you don't have that party infrastructure in place to gather those signatures. I think it's also structurally a problem for a third party in, in raising money. You don't have a natural uh, base to go to from one party or the other. But I almost think more than the structural disadvantages for a third por party are, is an ideological challenge. And that is, in this question, I think what this question, the openness to a third party shows is a dissatisfaction with Republicans and Democrats. These people know what they don't want because they're seeing gridlock. But when you start to ask people, okay, let's get a third party, what are we for? That's when it becomes much more difficult because people have different ideas of what the solution is, even though they all disagree on the problem. And I think that's a, a major, would be a major struggle for a third party to really uh, come up out of this. There have been several serious third party candidates over the years. Then former President Theodore Roosevelt got 27 percent and carried six states in 1912. Former Alabama Governor George Wallace won 13 and percent and won four states in 1968. And Ross Perot won nearly 19 percent of the vote in 1992. So is there a serious third party candidate who could emerge by 2016? Well, I think every 12 years or so, there is an appetite for a third party candidate at the presidential level, which you just talked about, and throw in Anderson in 1980. Uh, but I think in order to, it's going to have to be more than that in order to get a, a third party, a major third party across the country. You have to have Senate candidates, you know, candidates for the U.S. Senate, candidates for the U.S. House uh, in place and ready to you know, to win seats. I mean, that's where the electoral power is going to come in winning seats. And so right now, in most cases, you see third party candidates, you know, they can get a significant chunk of the vote, maybe in a presidential race, maybe winning a governorship or two. Uh, but it's going to take more than that, more organization, I think, more money to uh, in order to have a, a major widespread change uh, across the country. All right, Nathan Gonzalez, deputy editor of the Rothenberg Political Report, joining us from Washington. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you.